All equipment entering the living nursery must be clean and all plant material, soil decontaminated according to the park procedures used to prove decontamination product. Big long fancy term for, you know, you gotta clean the stuff. Don't move it in and out. Don't take it out and use it to grow and bring it back to the nursery. Don't do those kinds of things. Make sure everything's clean. And so some of us, myself and several others, are really kind of a little overboard on this because of how important it is. I actually have a dishwasher in my nursery. And every pair of clippers goes in the dishwasher every night and gets washed, which has a heat cycle under the 168 degrees. Anyway, nursery employees who work with citrus produced outside the approved structure shall not not return to work in the improved structure. All persons under the approved structure or soil storage area shall walk through sanitized foot bath uh, containing a decontaminant that is approved by the department, such as copper sulfate. And there's a whole list of other stuff here. And I think the level of sanitation depends a lot on what your situation in your state is and where you are. But good, good basic sanitation is important. It'll go a long way. And let's look at it like this, another way to try and make the importance of this. Let's say I'm just going to pick an easy number. I'm going to say, let's say a guy grows 10,000 trees a year. Let's say his production, uh, let's say his infection rate for something like phytophthora, which you will see a lot faster in a container in a nursery than you would in the ground. It shows up quicker. And if you're looking at the tree, you'll tell it. Let's say it's 2%. Well, that's 2,000 trees a year. Let's just say that the cost of a tree is, I don't know what the cost of a tree in Texas is going to be, but let's say it's seven bucks. That's 2,000 trees times seven bucks a piece. That's uh, $14,000 a year. $14,000 a year in losses versus a few thousand dollars a year in good sanitation. The sanitation is well paid. It's important. Sanitation continued. Non-certified citrus nursery stock cannot be grown or introduced in the same greenhouse or structures with citrus nursery stock. In other words, in a citrus nursery, you will grow citrus, and you will not grow anything else. You can't be growing peaches. You can't be growing ornamentals. You can't have a line of hibiscus down one side. Nope. Orange citrus nurseries in Florida are supposed to grow just citrus. Nursery shall be made available, or the records shall be made available chemical applications, budding tree removing records. Nice, just all again, traceability stuff. Stuff that allows to make sure that if we have an issue, we can trace it back. See any citrus stalk or budwood source tree found infected or exposed um, to plant infestation shall be subject to immediate quarantine action and will not be eligible for certification. What does expose mean? Well, that's a vague term. Exposed can mean that you had a silly get in. Exposed could mean a roof came off. Exposed could mean that you had a guy in there who, who you think had canker on his shoes. I don't know. I could make a list up. The point is that we're, you have to be very serious. The tone needs to be set for sanitation. Foundation trees, in our case in Florida, I thought this was a little important here, that they belong to the state of Florida. They don't belong. They belong to our industry and our state. They don't belong to any one individual. They are governed by a group of people who set the prices, who determine what space available, who work on new varieties, those kinds of things. Now, it seems a little trivial, I think, that we have a committee that governs the foundation. But here's one of the issues that you're going to begin to face in Texas. And, uh, you have to find ways to work through. So an example is you come up with new varieties, and these new varieties begin to come online, where are you going to put them? You can't plant them in the field if you want property from them. And you can plant them in the field and evaluate them, absolutely, you should. But to have propagated material, you have to have space to plant them. So as your industry moves forward, and as you have new varieties come online, you must have space to put them. And believe it or not, space fills up pretty fast. Even in our own Chiefland facility, we're, we're running out of space. So does your foundation block need to have 100 of Rio Red grapefruit, or does it need to have 50? 
or you know, let's, I'll pick something that doesn't matter. Rubies have kind of fallen out of favor and are not selling that well. We got a hundred ruby trees in here. Do we take half the ruby trees out or do we leave them in case the price changes in the future? All something your industry works through and has to decide. But space becomes an issue. Okay, so here's the big question. How did it change us? What did it do to us? What did the rule do to us? How do we deal with it? So here's the, I'm going to show you the change in the number of nurseries and the change in the number of propagations. All right, 2002, we had 71 nurseries. In 2003, we were at 60, then 53, then 46. 2006, a rule took effect. We had 35 registered nurseries. In 2012, we are back to 47. We now have more nurseries producing trees than we did in 2005 by one. Nursery numbers are up in our state. So even though some of the nurseries aren't producing the same number of trees, because the big field nurseries changed. We had big field nurseries producing, you know, three quarters of a million to a half a million trees at a time. Those changed. The still those guys are still in business. They're still growing a lot of trees. The number of nurseries are up. And I actually think this is going to become 48. I have a friend that was uh, starting his own nursery again, and I think this will become 48 here in the next few months if it hasn't already. Change in propagations. In 2002, 5,846,373 trees. In four, we went to 4.8 million, 3.9 million, 2.1 in 2005. All right, here's the rule impact. So we had canker landing in here, we had HLB landing in here. Here's post rule. 2.5 million, 3.5 million and 8, 3.7 and 9, 3 and 10, 3.1 and 11, 3.9 million and 12. We produced almost as many trees in 12 as we did in 2004, and that number will continue to go up. Provided, of course, that our customers continue to make profit. So there's always a discussion, you're going to put me out of business, you're going to put me under the world's you know, coming to an end, it's a tough transition, but it's not the end. It's just a transition. And at the end of the day, if you're a nurseryman and you like what you do, you get better. Because this has made all of us in Florida really get better. And I think you can do the same thing. It's not that we're brighter, it's not that we're smarter, it's not that we have anything else, it's just that we started sooner than All right, so again, symbiotic relationship. All segments are needed to maintain a profitable industry. It's no one individual's fault. It's no one individual's responsibility. It must be a group effort. Informal discussions to establish a quality tree standard could be beneficial. So keep talking. This is a little bit different here. I put this up. This is about a quality tree. Every industry has a little different standard for a tree. So this is what you would see in Florida, a citra pot, you know, three-eighths of an inch caliper at the bug union. Roughly, it varies a little bit, but let's say roughly 24 inches tall. This is California nursery here. So this is a four inch by four inch by 14 inch citra pot. This is a seven inch by 17 or 18 inch bag. You see a lot of these in California. I don't know if this trend is continuing. I think Aaron can answer better than I can if you want to know. He knows more about what's going on there. The point being that the standard there is a little different for here. Here's a standard Brazilian tree in a bag. This is a 6 inch by 12 inch deep bag. That's a pretty close to a standard Brazilian tree that goes into the field. These trees over here, this is a typical Mexican tree that comes out of a greenhouse. Again, a bag, a 5-inch by 12-inch bag, but they're budded way up here like this. This is all rootstock way up here like this. Has a lot to do with phytophthora. They can't, if they bud them down here, they can't get them to go. They've got to keep them up. They also have a huge phytophthora problem. Final thought. An investment in knowledge pays the most interest. Benjamin Franklin, it's not new. We're all learning. I'm in the same boat with you. I'm still trying to learn and make improvements too. It's not the end. It's just a new beginning. Thank you very much.
introduce the next speaker. And actually, uh, Paul Wright's introducing and moderating this 